Welcome to the Monroe Review, where it's all about connecting, sharing, and valuing the arts in the central San Joaquin Valley. I'm Donald Monroe. Today is April 28th, and I am so excited to be here in the CMAX studio with a wonderful lineup of guests for our May show. We're putting the focus on the visual arts today with two great in-studio guests. Kia Cotton of Scarab Creative Arts is here to talk about a special art hop fundraiser where you can help people in Ukraine. And we'll be checking in with another art hop highlight, artist Mac Mecham, who is here to talk about his very political art. In between, we'll be showing you a story we shot in the field, this one about the wonderful Boom Oaxaca show at Arte Americas. But first, here's a sample of what I've been covering on MonroeReview.com. After 15 months of community protests and legal battles, it looks like the sale of the Tower Theater to Adventure Church is off for now. The Fresno City Council voted at a tumultuous meeting for the city to buy the building instead. This is a big victory for the grassroots movement that rose up to oppose a sale to the church. While I'm happy with the news, I wrote a commentary asking about some of the questions of the deal. For one thing, the city of Fresno doesn't exactly have a great track record when it comes to running theaters on its own. The two biggest examples are the Fresno Veterans Memorial Auditorium, which has fallen apart over the decades, and the Saroyan Theater, which needs its own renovations and whose rental fees have been driving local arts groups away. The other big question is whether Measure P money will be used to operate the theater. Local arts groups are worried that proceeds from the sales tax initiative, a chunk of which is devoted to arts funding, will be diverted to the tower, thus decreasing the pot for money-starved nonprofit groups. In other coverage, I wrote a piece talking about the wonderful production of the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee at Roger Rocca's Dinner Theater. I offer an interview with Jessica Rose Knotts, who plays an important role in the new Good Company production of I Remember Mama at the Second Space Theater. I review a bunch of past productions, including the musical Ordinary Days at Fresno Pacific University, and I preview Rent at Fresno State. And in case you missed all of my coverage of Hamilton, and I mean all, I did a lot, which enthralled Fresno audiences for two weeks in April, you can go to my special page, which includes my review, an interview with the actor who played the title character, and an in-depth piece on some controversy over the Saroyan Theater's sound. Now, let's get to my first guest. Kia Cotton is here representing a dynamic, newish Fresno art hop stop, Scarab Creative Arts. Welcome, Kia. Thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. So Scarab has kind of a familiar name, yeah. doesn't it? Wh wh where did it come from? Well, it's been around for years and it was Scarab Glassworks, which was a stained glass studio and shopping um, area for stained glass as well. You could get stained glass supplies. And um, in the late 70s, the new owner, Maggie, um, had a dream of someday owning that building because it's a really dynamic, cool building. It's and, like, she, and this is Maggie Curtis. Yeah, Maggie and she, Curtis. And she actually worked at Scare. She did in the late 70s. She's a stained glass artist. And um, she also teaches stained glass now at Scarab Creative Arts. So she had a dream of hopefully one day being able to buy the building, which she did right before COVID, and during COVID remodeled it to what it is today. And today it's it's really it's a thriving. Cool, yeah, it, 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 it's starting to, definitely. I think as people start learning about it and know what's happening down there, then it will definitely. But um, it's a place for individual artists, and it's also a place for the community. So. There's a working studio, there's a communal studio space, um, and there's a gift boutique right next to it where our artists can um, sell their things. It's mostly their things. And then we have a really beautiful um, gallery space where we show uh, local artists. I, I think it's not local artists as well, but mostly local artists. And then there's a classroom in the back as well. And so we have art classes available of all kinds. We have 
local artists coming in like Amy Morgan doing um, uh, silk painting scarf classes. We have a mosaic glass class, mixed media. We have ceramic classes. Maggie does her stained glass classes. I do children's classes. Um, we, so it's really kind of like a one-stop shop it really in terms is. of which, what you yeah. offer. Yeah, and it's a great um, place for individual artists too because it's a, it's a really nice studio space and then in the back there's also all their storage space and there's kilns and we even have a room that's for like um, resin you know, like if you have like um, chemical type mm -hmm. stuff that mm -hmm. you're doing, it's fanned and it you can do that kind of stuff too. And so you're having a special event for for the next Art Hop. Yeah. Um, tell us about that. This is a fundraiser um, yeah. for, the, for for Ukraine. Yeah. One of our members, um, Marina Holiday, um, is a ceramic artist, and she is from Ukraine. And she, in support of her and um, just what's happening in the world right now, um, the members decided to have a silent auction attached to Art Hop. And so we have been collecting um, donated art from local artists, outside artists, um, to present in this silent auction. Even some of my students, um, uh, young artists are donating, and uh, we will be benefiting uh, Doctors Without Borders in Ukraine. And Marina has already been fundraising. Yeah, making, I understand. Yeah, uh, for April Art Hop. Yeah, and she made those those beautiful the yeah, beautiful I'm one of them necklaces. The mm -hmm. color the the yellow and blue, of course, yeah. the color of Ukraine. And she raised more than five thousand dollars. She has just by herself, yeah. and now the community is really kind of stepping rallying things up, her. rallying we are. around her. We totally are, yeah, and she's, we're excited. She has a really interesting story. She was you know, trained as a civil engineer and- She's a smart cookie, and, yeah. But, but was born in Kiev, mm -hmm. and you know, she's still in contact with her family members. And mm -hmm. I talked to her earlier this week, and oh, I, just, cool. I just asked her, you know, what is it like yeah. To to well, I can't really imagine what it's like to know, know that your family members are in danger. But she said that some of them are just sleeping on mattresses in the corridors right. of their apartment buildings because they're worried about the glass yeah. blowing out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Marina is an incredible artist. Um, she makes these beautiful ceramic bells. She makes jewelry. She makes all kinds of stuff. But she's also just a lovely human being. Like it's been such a pleasure getting to know her. And that's one of the things about Scarab that's so great is this communal feel that we have with each other. It's very down to earth place too. Like you can just be yourself. So there are working artists there. Like um, one of our artists, Hannah, she, I mean, she creates so much um, art and she sells it i i don't know exactly where she sells it but she is a workhorse and mm. then there's other artists that come in that are there because they just want to have fun and it's like their space to kind of de-stress and let loose because you know as you know art is just good for the soul right and, you know? and isn't that a great thing after covid yeah is to be able to yeah. commune Absolutely. with artists again i understand you have your own sort of COVID sad story to a tell, little, but, you're coming, yeah. but you're coming back. Blessing you, in disguise, You really. opened a gallery, what, I just a couple a, months before Yeah, I had COVID? a small studio at M Street Arts Complex. Um, and, uh, and that was called? It's called Art Lab 559. Um, and I do children's art classes. I do paint parties, and then I do private uh, paint sessions too. Um, but... Yeah, opened up in January 2020 and then had to shut down in March 2020, right? Um, but it really was a blessing in disguise because I really love the communal vibe at at Scarab. Mm -hmm. Like, it really feels like we're building community. And you still are able to teach students? Yeah, uh, so Maggie teacher contacted students. me and said, hey, I have space here that you could, you know, And your teacher. students are, and how old are they? Um, they're between the ages of six and 13. Great. Yeah. What an inspiring thing to do. Yeah. It's so awesome. I love it so much. Um, I'm really passionate about 
giving um, elementary aged kids to even high school, you know, art opportunities because so much of that has been taken out of schools and and it's such a bummer because the arts are so vital. I mean, your next guest, Mac, and I were talking about how it's so good for their development. It's so good for their academic um, right. growth. It's also just good for their soul, good for their emotional well-being. And um, and it's fun. Yeah. It's totally fun, yeah. you know? So before yeah. we run out of time, I want to also let people know that uh, there is a featured artist yeah. for May, Corky Absolutely. Normart. Um, you know, He's a, incredible. And a Fresno legend. Yeah. He, um, is in his early 90s and is still going strong. Yeah. Um, so I guess he's got some some older stuff yep. that he's going to show and yep. then some newer stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, he's an award-winning watercolorist and uh, sculptor. Yeah. And has traveled to Jerusalem to be part of... Yeah, basically he designed yeah. the dome of right. the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Yeah. and I don't know if I said that right, but I tried. I don't I know tried. either. <laughs> And, and but it's where Jesus is buried. Yeah, 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 it was a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. And tell yeah. us again, where is Scarab? Scarab is on the corner of Divisadero and Broadway okay. in the Mural Arts District, 729 Divisadero Street. And Art Hop's going to be uh, Thursday, May 5th from 5 to 8. And the um, silent auction is going to be running from 530 to 7. And um, we're going to also be showcasing um, Art Lab 559's student art in the classroom area. So if you keep going past the gallery, you're going to also see the student art showcasing this time, too. Well, so, great. It sounds like it's just going to be a lively yeah. place, the place to be. It's for going to be Hub. really awesome. Yeah. Ex except for Max show. Well, up, except right? for Max show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Kia, for, for coming by and talking oh, with so us. you're so welcome. And uh, I think it sounds like a great art hop. It's going to be awesome. Thank you for having us. Fantastic. Thank you for that packed interview. Boy, we really got a lot of information into that interview. And you can check out the website for Scarab at scarabgallery.com. One of the major art events of the year is taking place at Arte Americas. It's the Boom Oaxaca exhibition, and it offers a fascinating view of this important region in Mexico. Producer Kyle Lowe and I got a special tour last week. Here's our report. So we are here at Arte Americas in downtown Fresno, and we're going to check out the Boom Oaxaca exhibition. So when you walk into Arte for this exhibition, this is what you see at the at the entryway. And we are here with Jesus Palayo, who is on the curatorial team here at Arte Americas, who has uh, spent a lot of time um, on this exhibition and in fact trains the docents uh, to give tours. And we're just excited that you're gonna be able to kind of lead us through the show today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I like to start right here where we're standing because this okay. kind of, this big piece was made to be impactful to kind of bring, uh, you know, kind of stun the, the viewer with the colors and the, the picture here. Um, but after, uh, you know, seeing this picture and learning about the people that, the, and the foundations that, that made this happen, uh, I always like to come right through here into the right. And here, this is where I generally just give the introduction as to what Bumahaka is what the intention of, of the team and uh, the local uh, CBDIO, what we wanted to do for the community here. Um, Central Valley is home to uh, approximately 50,000 people that consider themselves indigenous Oaxaqueños. So it's important that um, their voice be heard and and not not be retold by by us, right? But in, commu in, in connection and community with them and collaboration. So this is, uh, an exhibition where we let them speak about their, their culture, um, about their history, um, about their art, and how they um, transpose that history, that culture through art. And not only that culture, but the merging of cultures when you have Oaxacans, Oaxacans coming to California and, and partaking in two different cultures and then merging it to, to create one. All right, so I'd like to start here with uh, Subterraneos. This collective is from Oaxaca City. and uh, there's, if you, if you pay attention here, there's a, like a real over, 
overarching message. Um, a, a lot of scenery that, that um, talks about political violence, um, movements throughout the ages that have seen people resist to imperialism, to colonization, to uh, destruction of culture. Um, this uh, collective specifically uh, is really inclusive of its community. It's not like the standard kind of um, uh, artist gallery where it's uh, not so much inclusive of, of the rest of the community. It's, it's, it really um, harnesses its community in, in a way that um, allows anybody from any kind of art background or, or whether they're beginning, beginning uh, or experts to, to come in and kind of develop their craft and, and kind of um, take part in, in, in the art that's for the people. All this stuff here, all, all these uh, wheat pastings that are done on, on, on woodcut lithographs are meant to be up on the walls. These are all done on, on wheat pastings, so they're, they're really hard to take off. So um, the intention behind putting them on, on the wall here uh, was so that we can see how they would look like in Oaxaca City and, and on those walls. You'll, so you'll see a little, um, I don't want to say imperfections, but for the lack of a better word. Um, so you'll see creases here and there. Um, kind of symbolizing the realistic feel of, of how they would look and how they would mm. age. Um, I really like to highlight this, these two pieces here because they kind of speak to the much forgotten about, not really talked about African diaspora within uh, Central South America and Mexico specifically. Tell me a little bit about this exhibition. It's, it's part of uh, a series of three, right? There's one at, uh, there was one at Fresno State, one at the Fresno Art Museum and then Arte, um, and it's part of this big McClatchy Fresno Art Foundation grant. Right, right. Um, what's special about this one? It's special because it's very Central Valley centric. It's, it's made for the people here. And, and it's original. And so it's, it's original. It's unlike yeah. them renting a show right. that comes from a different yeah, part of the LA country. Yeah, from LA or from New York. That was the original intention um, because of COVID we had more time to plan and, and to really, you know, dream uh, big, big dreams and, 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 and think, well, what if we made it our own show, you know? Um, so, and that's what we try to do. And a lot of the work that you see from Tlacolo Locos have a lot of themes that speak to the Central Valley. Um, things that, uh, the colors, red, representing Fresno State, the Norteños, the Bulldogs, uh, a lot of ag, the, the strawberries, the sceneries and the backdrops. And that's also because Dario, one of the Tlacolo Locos, had some, uh, he, ha he was here, I think around 2014, I might be wrong on that year, but he was here, has some kind of connection with, with Fresno and he knows how big the Oaxacan um, culture is here. This is um, Lowrider. Oh, we've got the shoes again. <laughs> there you go, yeah, with the tag still on. These are the Nikes. Oh, okay. Um, this is called Lowrider. A five by 15 uh, acrylic on canvas. I like this because it's, uh, it speaks to a lot of what we talked about in the beginning, about that transnationalism, the emerging cultures to create one, and kind of taking ownership of those two and creating a whole new thing. Um, you'll see, like we said, the Nikes with the Ray-Bans, the traditional dress here with the bandana, um, traditional etchings on the skin, and all, then, of course, all the within, best little city in the USA, right? Which is, speaking to Fresno, is the Fresno and the the huge tractor. I mean, that's motto, that's yeah. the ag work here, you know. Also, the red bandana symbolizing the big bulldog gang Norteño presence. I don't think it's necessarily a you know promoting that. It's just a reality of of what's here. Right. Um, right. Really I, interesting use of color, and then of of more the grayscale. Right. And yeah. it really pops. Yeah. And it's big. <laughs> it's, it's massive. It is yeah. a huge work. And I, I love this person in the front seat. I think anybody who's in the, you know, in the driver's seat is obviously taking power. They're, they're taking control. And I think this is what that symbolizes here. Control over this vast economy, the ag economy here, how they play a role how they are really in control of it, because if they stopped working today, it would fall apart. Um, and also, a, a throw it back to a history that they've kind of conquered. You know, this is a head of a conquistador with arrows in it, and it's on the 
front of the tractor. And to me, that kind of symbolizes, I know my, my past, I know my history, and I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward with it. I'm, I've kind of conquered the conquistador, you know? See, that's what I love about going through an exhibition like this yeah. with somebody who has thought about it a lot. I would never have, have really taken that in. Yeah, I'm surprised not many people know what this helmet is and what that would. Yeah, now that, you, now that you show yeah. it, yeah, it's obviously not what you would find on the front of a tractor, but right. yeah, that's, right. that's great. Yeah, so this, this really just means power. Power in, in, in what this person represents, the culture, the, the driving force, right? The driving force of this whole economy. And like you say, and just kind of the, the, the power of the driver, the, the right. body language. The body language, yeah, that, that, that perception that, that I know what I hold, I know what my power is. Yeah. So over here we have Oja Santa. This is a all-female led uh, printmaking collective. Uh, based in Oaxaca as well. There's uh, three portfolios here. I usually start on this side here. This is called semillitas, uh, meaning little seeds. Um, and I think the intention here was to kind of talk about, quite literally, the, the seeds that we sow, the seeds that are passed on by previous generations, especially um, on the maternal side. Language and, and culture and perception um, being sown and through the mother, through the, 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 the daughter. And, and these are all different takes on, on, on the artist's kind of journey through, through growing through, those, through that seed, through evolving you know, into uh, the person that they are. So this one is, is really cool and it, you know, it speaks to just my upbringing, what I've learned through my mother and my grandmother. This is called Jardin Femenino. It's, it's a feminine garden. Uh, so these are all artworks representing different um, traditional medicines, plant medicines that have been passed down that they connect with. Um, you'll see images of maybe a lavender and, and what that symbolizes to that artist. You'll see aloe here. That's pretty much grown in, in any of my family members' backyard. It's, it's always there. Mm -hmm. um, anytime you get a scrape, you put aloe on it. To me, it's really, it's really nice to see that culture that I grew up with, that knowledge that was passed down from my mother, from her grandmother, and from her mother, is kind of resonating with other people, so many other people, you know, especially artists, so that they can create that memory into something as beautiful as this. Because this was such a long process, and there were just so many doubts throughout it, like how this was going to work, how we're going to pull it off. Um, seeing the community that that was intended for come out so strong on opening day on March 5th was just amazing. Uh, I, just seeing so many people come in here and, and knowing exactly what this was about, um, going into the next uh, room and Narciso's work and the, the farm workers, uh, there were so many people that were just breaking down in tears because they felt like they saw themselves and, and generations of their families in, in artwork in a gallery, you know, and it's, it was really impactful and, and it's turned out to, to stay that way. I think a lot of the community is, is happy that we're, we're doing this and they feel a little sense of pride and they should because this is all, up, you know, for them, by them. It's a very emotional yeah, connection that definitely. they can have. We were talking before about the scale yeah. of the work in the other gallery, but this. This is the, probably the biggest piece. Is amazing. I mean, these yeah. figures are almost life-size. Yes. This is Narciso Martinez. He yeah. uh, moved here from Oaxaca um, when he was 20, 21. Studied at uh, CSU Long Beach, got his master's in fine art there, and uh, has been painting ever since. This, I think, specifically is about the um, humanizing of the farm worker. You know, and uh, we talked a little bit about that in Tlaco Locos, but this, this is very um, specific ab about uh, the things that farm workers do in the fields, the things they experience, the things they have to do to get through it. Um, and if we move a little back and we kind of analyze this, we, we can see obviously that it's a, meant to look like a big, you know, dollar. Right. It's, talking about the, the value, again, the farm worker brings to the table. This is definitely the Fresno yeah. reference. Yeah, he did this uh, here in residence. Uh, he finished it right before we, we opened. And I guess what we're looking at is we're looking at the 
the grapevine That's looking right. down into going into the 99 into 99 the yeah. Bakersfield yeah 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 and it's yeah like I said it a lot of this work is valley centric and this is a good representation of that a lot of these faces you see here are almost all of them are from Fresno um, different uh, business owners this is I think Rosalba of uh, Black Socalo she I think um, grows traditional uh, native plants to Oaxaca. This is, our, uh, this is a mixtec wrapper, a trilingual wrapper, Una Isu from Fresno. It's kind of an, an homage to, to the Oaxacan culture here in, in the valley. Well, thank you, Jesus, for this, this tour. It's been you know, really informative and also really moving. And that's what I would say that I took away or that I take away from this exhibition. It's a really moving experience. Um, so tell us, how can people come and see yeah. in Oaxaca? We will be open Thursday through Sunday through August 14th, 12 to 5 p.m. Uh, throughout that time, there will be uh, different events um, that will you know, have us open a little later, maybe till 7 or, uh, 7 or 8 p.m. at the latest. But so from March 5th through August 14th, Thursday through Sunday, 12 to 5 are the dates for the most part. Okay. Um, and for anybody that wants to book a tour, specifically schools, teachers, uh, they can reach out to me personally at info.umoaxaca at gmail.com. Okay, yeah. okay. Well, great. I, I highly recommend him as a tour guide. So. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. My pleasure. Our next guest is Mac Meacham, who is very well known for his sharp, as in pointed, political commentary. One thing's for sure about Mac, he isn't shy about his opinions. His work is featured in a new retrospective show at Downtown Artist Gallery, and it's opening and closing at Art Hop. So welcome, Mac. Thank you for being here. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, you know, and a pleasure. It, appreciate it, it. It's fun because you've gotten in the habit of emailing me now and again um, mm -hmm. some of your creations mm -hmm. and um, you know it's they're always very topical they're always very funny mm -hmm. um, so I, I appreciate that it's sort well, of like having an editorial cartoon on my they're just sitting in my dark garage if I don't email them to you okay okay so so uh, tell us about about you you have been in Fresno for a long time mm -hmm. Um, you taught at McLean High School yes. for many years. How long did you teach there? I taught at McLean for 36 years. 36 years. Uh, started in 1966 till 2002. And uh, it was uh, one of the greatest experiences of my life working with those high school kids. They're so open and wonderful. I, I would do it again in an instant. And then I also taught concurrently at uh, Fresno City College. I taught a, a drawing and painting class at night, two nights a week there for quite some time. And then when I retired from McLean, I, I got a job at Reedley teaching a drawing class two days a week. So I did that for 10 years. So now, now I'm, I'm you, you totally fit in, retired. You fit in a, um, an interesting master's project. Uh, when, when did that come? Well, uh, when I was uh, in college, I, I went to college to play football. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And, so I had to keep my grades up to stay eligible. So when my career was over, I was too small and too dumb to go on to pro football. So I, I kind of got lost. I was partying too much and, and uh, just kind of spinning my wheels. And a friend of mine who was in the same position, we were talking one night and we decided we would just go ahead and just sell everything we owned and take a trip to Europe for a year. We would hitchhike through Europe. So we did just that. We sold everything we owned and we got a round trip ticket to Europe. And, we went to, I'd never been in an art gallery or a museum before until I got to Europe. My first experience was the, uh, um, the um, Prado Museum in um, Spain and Madrid, and I was totally blown away by uh, uh, all the wonderful Velazquez, uh, all the great artists there, and, and the students were sitting there actually copying paintings. And th at that moment, I decided that I was going to go home, grow up, be an artist, and be a teacher. That changed my whole life. So thank God I went to, to Europe for that year. So. And so then you came back. Then I came back and got serious about it and I started a master's program and I had to come up with an original idea. 
uh, I want to do something social comment and figurative, because that's what I like to do. And, and uh, I was really struggling with an idea for, to do that. I didn't know what to do. And one morning, uh, uh, my children were watching television in the living room, and I walked in, and they were watching a documentary about the dung beetle. And the dung beetle uh, would, would find a, some cow dung, and he would, or she would make a ball out of the cow dung, and she'd push it around, and she would lay her eggs in this, in this uh, round ball of dung, and the, the babies would hatch in there and eat the, the dung until they were old enough to come out. And so I, I thought, you know, that's, that's really interesting. That's kind of like a, a junk dealer, you know? That's, they live off the refuse of, of, of humanity. I thought, wow, what a great idea for a, a master's project, Crea creating similarities between animals and humans and creating social comment mm -hmm. out of that. So that's, how, that's what I did. So I did the, uh, uh, the, the uh, motorcycle gang and the wolf pack. That was my first one. Then I did the, uh, the pimp and the prostitute and the lion and the pride. They work the territories, the same thing happens. And then my last one was the um, uh, teenage gangs in Chicago's, Chicago. They're divided in territories, just like the rhesus monkeys in Santiago Islands. They're always struggling for larger territories. And they're constantly fighting. And the girls like to go with the guys in the bigger territories. So that was the, the idea for my third painting. So, so was, this show that you're going to have at Art Hop, it's a retrospective. Yes. D are, are any of those really early works? Part uh, of that? No, uh, we, we, uh, my photographer, we had trouble ph photographing this one, so I'm not going to put it in. Okay, okay. What, but, when, does, when does the retrospective start? Like, how, how uh, old is the probably oldest Probably 19, piece? the oldest one's probably 1975. It's a painting of my dad, who's standing in front of his crop duster. He was a crop duster in Pixley for years and years and years, and I did a painting of him, a portrait. And did your work take a... Uh, 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 angle or a, a detour into political uh, subject matter at some point in your well, career? At, or? at first I was doing, uh, I was doing uh, non-objectives. I enjoyed doing that. I was doing portraiture and I did a series of jazz uh, works in, in Prismacolor pencils that, that sold very well. Uh, and uh, so I was exploring different areas, but I, I, I would always come back to the social comments. So I've been doing it off and on during the whole time. But, but the last, uh, since about the age of 70, I think this has been my most creative and, and lucrative period. And I've really, really done my best work in the last uh, 10 years of my life. Well, let's, take, let's talk about a couple of, of those works. Okay. Um, you've, you've got the, the image of, and you call it the, the Russian connection. This is um, basically President Putin holding President yes. Trump like a baby. Well, uh, I've, I've seen, I saw the the, uh, the television thing where he was um, uh, taking Trump's word over the, over our own government's word. It was on national television. I remember that, and that kind of got me thinking about it. He he idolizes this man. He respects him and adores him. He even, even says today that he's one of the smartest men he knows. It's just it's just crazy. So I thought that maybe he was kind of like a child figure and, and looking up to Putin as a child might look up to a father figure. So I, and, then, and then I thought about a dog with a collar and a chain. So I have him sitting in Putin's lap like a dog might, but he's got a oh, collar and a chain okay. on. And he's looking up lovingly into Putin's eyes. Okay. I, forgot the, the, I forgot the collar. Yes. Um, now, you did a piece called Yankee Doodle Dandy for an earlier show. I ran that on the Monroe Review. And actually, there were you know, people who weren't happy with me. Oh, I can imagine, yeah. Does that happen to you very often? I, I've never had a negative, uh, really? any negative uh, blowback yet, but I'm waiting for it. Okay, okay. I, I keep my doors locked and I'm always looking out the, the kitchen window to make sure that I know everybody that's passing by. <laughs> because you never know when you're gonna get it this day and age, right? That's right, that's right. Uh, how How long does it take for one of your ideas to kind of they happen almost become full. I, they, they they just happen. Uh, I'll like one time I went to a uh, a poker game f with some fellows I didn't know in, uh, in uh, Clovis, and uh, they they were talking about uh, they were using uh, uh, Obama's name uh, in in vain, and uh, I, I thought you know if these guys are not in the Ku Klux Klan, they've got to be closet Klansmen, and I thought. Closet Klansman, what a wonderful idea for a painting. So I went home and painted a, a, 
a Ku Klux Klan was sitting in the closet. Do you devour the headlines? Is, well, is that where you get your material? I, you, I, you just I get ideas reading? from listening to people talk like I did from, um, from segments in the news. Uh, uh, they, they come from anywhere. You know, it's amazing. And uh, usually my ideas come like at 3 o'clock in the morning when I'm half asleep and half awake and I'm, I'm very relaxed and kind of subconscious. Then things start happening at that time. So your retrospective is actually only going to be one night only. It's just one night only, yeah. And was it hard to, or has it been hard to kind of narrow yeah, that I've down? Yeah, got, I've got maybe twice as much many pieces as I'd, I'd like to put them all in the show. So, but I tried to get a variety of things. I, I put in uh, uh, oil paintings and, and some drawings I've, I've done and uh, a few collages that I've been doing lately. Mm -hmm. And so kind of a, a wide variety of different expressions, you know, not just so much the oil paintings. Right, right. Yeah. Well, Mac, I am so glad you were able to stop by and, and talk about your show. And this is an example of you really got to put this one on your calendar because it's only there one night. That's you can't, right. You can't come back later yeah. in the month. So it's, it's, it's a one-shot deal, folks, for you to come <laughs> to my show. And, and, you know, this is not the first time that I've been, I've been on television with my art. When I was in the ninth grade, uh, there was a show called Webster Webfoot locally and jimmy uh webb was was the guy and he had a little puppet called Hi, everybody. How are you? it was webster webfoot and and he would have us children send in pictures and he would pin them up on the board and talk about it so one day i got a phone call from the station they said jimmy wants you to come to the show and and do a drawing of one of your cartoons <laughs> so that was my first experience with art and television. Well, that's fantastic. Maybe that's what I need as a puppet sidekick. Oh, okay. let's, let's think about that, Kyle, okay? We'll have, we'll have that a be good. little arts puppet. There, I'd be glad so. to do the voice for you if you okay. want. <laughs> yes, you, it sounds like you're a pro. So, Downtown Artist Gallery, that is on Mono Street and Van Ness, right? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's, it's in the Bitwise building. In, in the yeah, Bitwise building. You can't building. miss it. Yeah. yeah, so that that's the place to be. Yes. Well, thank you again, Mac. Well, it's thank you great. so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's fun. All right. Well, that wraps it up for this month's episode of the Monroe Review. Be sure to keep up online at monroereview.com for previews, giveaways, profiles, reviews, and more. A big thank you to our volunteer crew. Yay! And a thank you to all of our guests, Kia Cotton, um, Jesus Palayo of Arte Americas, and Mac Meacham. And for all of you, please keep exploring and supporting the local art scene. We'll see you next time.